The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Phenomenal women. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Phenomenal Women. There we go. (laughs) Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Women. I am so glad to be with you this Friday evening, as normally I'm with you on Friday mornings. But we have a very special guest with me today, and she is multifaceted in all areas. She's a television personality and a licensed attorney, relationship expert, life coach, motivational speaker, and she has a number one show called Lauren Lake's Paternity Court. Welcome, Lauren Lake. Thank you so much for being with me this Thank afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I, I'm just loving this <laughs> this list of all the things that you do. Oh, thank on you. On top of having a number one show. I love it. Thank you. Blessed. Yes, yes. So basically, you are expert on life, love, law, and everything. And living. And living. That's what That's, we say. I, yes. I love yes. it. I love <laughs> it. So let's get started on paternity court. Sure. And tell us a little bit about your show and, and keeping it real, as you would say. Well, paternity Paternity Court is a court show, talk show hybrid, we say, because, you know, in our show, families come into our courtroom and they're dealing with some issue that relates to paternity, a question about paternity. And we provide them with those answers uh, via DNA testing. Uh, But that's not really the biggest aha moment of our show. Mm -hmm. The biggest aha moment of our show is... After knowing the truth, now that you know the truth and you have the truth, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to use this truth to better your life, to empower you, to take your life and your family's life to the next level? Um, And so we're excited that audiences have received it the way um, they have. I mean, the support has been overwhelming. The ratings have been through the roof. And we're so thankful because we believe in what we do. And it's, we're about empowering families. Absolutely. And, uh, and and I think it shows. And because you just give a little bit more than just, you know, the paternity test. You actually coach them. You actually teach them. You actually nurture them on being better people, being better fathers, being better mothers. And I think that is what people need nowadays as opposed yeah. to what's on television now which is just more of the drama oh yeah yeah, you know and look life is full of drama Mm -hmm. our show is full of colorful personalities sometimes characters (laughs) and look sometimes stories yeah you know all of our stories people are real you know we say the cases are real real people real emotions real drama um, and I'm a judge that keeps it real. I love Meaning it. Meaning <laughs> that I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, which is not necessarily what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you with love. And because I don't underestimate or count anyone out. You know, there are people that may look at people on our show and say, oh, well, look, at that only happens to those kind of people. No, 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 it doesn't. It happens to all of us mm-hmm. because we all have our own hugest mistake. We've all been in that place in our life where we look in the mirror and have to say, self... Now, you know you could have done better than that and figure out how to get back up again, how to try again. And I think that's why people relate to uh, our show so much, because it's it's about paternity. And yet there's a bigger picture and there are bigger issues. It's about marriage, family, relationships. Who do I belong to? Who's supposed to love me and who am I supposed to love? Broken people, Mm. hurt people, hurting people, uh, beginning again, starting anew, uh, second chances. These are all issues that people can relate to because these are things we go through right. so whether you're going through a paternity situation or know someone that is or whether you're just not you can look at our show and still draw from it still learn from it and still appreciate the life lessons presented absolutely I love that now with the number one show take us through the journey of how you got there because you're an attorney as well yes so you started practicing law first many many years many ago <laughs> almost 20 years ago uh, <laughs> practicing law family law mm-hmm. uh, even did a lot of criminal defense work and uh, entertainment law along the way I was a sole practitioner I started my first license was in Michigan and then moved on to uh, be licensed to practice law in New York and New Jersey as well. And throughout my career, you know, it was interesting. As a family attorney, I 
often representing men, women in divorce, child custody, and just walking them through the process, um, you become increasingly aware that sometimes as you're managing broken relationships and trying to figure out how to get people to resolve their issues, come to an agreement to resolve a particular relationship, it becomes evident why it's so difficult for them because, you know, the relationship is broken because the people are broken. Right. And, you know, it's sad sometimes because you would see in, in many circumstances, these two people really love each other. But this relationship's never going to work until they work on each other, till they work on themselves, I should say. And I begin to, you know, we are attorneys and counselors at law, but oftentimes I would find myself counseling people about much more than just the law and what it relates, how it relates to their particular uh, uh, situation. Mm -hmm. I found myself counseling them about, you know, how to overcome a relationship that's gone wrong, how to deal with infidelity, how to still maintain some level of self-esteem, self-respect, dignity when you've been betrayed, when you're in a situation where you feel like someone has just completely let you down. How do you start again yeah. when you feel like everything you wanted out of life, believed you should have or worked for has failed you or hasn't worked out the way you thought? Sometimes in order to get a person to a place where they can come to an agreement with their ex or dissolve a relationship, you have to work them to the point where they feel strong enough to enter that place where they can say, I'm now ready to let it go. Because for some, they hold on to it mm -hmm. so long because holding on to that relationship and holding on to that dysfunction and, and denying the fact that it's over is a way of not having to address what's really right. in front of them. And so as a lawyer, I found myself, look, counseling them uh, through so many different situations. And I think that is the start of how I became judge of Lauren Lake's paternity court, because uh, the creator of the show w followed my career. You mm -hmm. know, after representing so many people, families over the years, um, I began to talk about the law for television. And so I would go on, um, you know, CNN, HLN, MSNBC, whatever, and I talk about the law, but not just about the law in the legal eagle sense, because that's one thing, but to talk about the law and be able to break it down and help people understand how the law can empower them, how it can help them instead of hinder them, how they should shouldn't be intimidated by it, but be interested in how this law can help me, help my situation, free me from my circumstance. And being able to break that down was, you know, quite frankly, a gift I realized I had. Yeah. And, you know, and when people would respond and say, hey, you know, after you spoke about this particular situation, I understand now how I can maneuver or I'm not afraid now to go get the legal help I need or to just talk about the problem I need to talk about. And the creator of Lauren Lake's paternity court, David Armour, saw me and he said, you know, I want to judge for this show that doesn't just know the law, doesn't mm -hmm. just understand the law, but really is passionate about empowering people with it, helping them take this law, this ruling, this legal situation, this legal resolution to the next level in their lives. And I was very pleased because it really, you know, it spoke to me because it yeah. says now what I've been doing over the years, you know, it matters. People see that, you know, truth, truly, what is knowledge or why is it useful unless it helps make you better? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, if it's too complex for you to understand or look, too boring for you to care to want to know, yeah, then you can't use it. So I, I take pride that I'm able to take a certain situation and just let, let's break this down. Yeah. Because ultimately, this is how it is going to relate. To right. You. Right. <laughs> you know, I was talking about this the other day. You know, I was saying. I don't know. I was on a, on, a, on a radio show somewhere and, and, and someone was asking me about talking to their ex about I said, look, you can either talk for free or you can pay to talk. Mm. Because ultimately, when you are going through divorce, child custody situation, this judge is going to say, excuse me, step out into the hallway and see if you can come to a resolution. So now you all can find it within yourselves to talk for free, meaning let's get together and figure out how we can work this out. 
who's going to get what, yeah. what days are we going to have the kids and what days we are. Because if not, you're going to pay lawyers. Yes. You're going to pay the court fees. You're going to pay everything. And you're still going to have to do the same talking. And that's why I encourage people to understand the law. So you can know how it can work for you instead of against you. But so many people don't know how to do that because they get their emotions tied into it. Sure. Yeah, it, it just becomes sure. too difficult for them to do it on their own. So they need that. And look, there's a service lawyers do. We do. We help. We help. But let's be honest. We cost money. Yes. And there are certain divorce actions. I say all the time, child custody situations where the only people winning in the situation are the lawyers because we're continuing you know, we're billing, billing hours yes. while you're just fighting it out. And I think the average American person, family, look, we just don't have that much money to waste. Let's just be honest. Yeah. It's very difficult. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And look, divorces can last one, two years, just still arguing over things that really it's not about those things. Exactly. So how do we cut to the chase? What's really bugging you? What do you feel like he's not hearing? What do you feel like she doesn't understand about you? What is your biggest beef with the way he handled this situation? What is your biggest issue with the way she operated in this marriage? If we can just put this on the table, then we can stop arguing about the blue couch that nobody really wants. <laughs> And nobody really cares about it. Right, you know? right. It's just the point that you all want something to hold on to because you feel like your issues have not been resolved and you haven't been heard. Uh, so, look, that for me is the greatest part of being judge of paternity court. It's because I'm able to hear the stories. Mm -hmm. And as he's going back and forth saying she did this and she's saying he did this, and it, I can look and sift through this information and figure out, okay, so it's really not about this. It's about something else. Let's get down to the bottom of what it's about because ultimately, even if I give them the answers they're seeking now, mm -hmm. they're going to leave this courtroom and, and act exactly the same way and be party to the same type of dysfunction they came in here with if we don't address what really going on right right and so I'm thankful that the creator of the show saw that in me mm -hmm. over you know years of watching me on various talk shows and coaching life coaching and things he says I've followed your career and I know that you come from a place of love from inspiration you want to motivate people to go to the next level and that's what I want I you know paternity has been dealt with in one way thus far on television but I think it's important to deal with it in a responsible respectful way and empowering way because it's happening more than people want to admit right it's that dirty little secret that people want to pretend like oh it's only happening to those people over there mm -hmm. but if we're being very honest most of us are about three degrees of sep uh, you know of separation, separation between someone that has experienced or is experiencing an issue related to paternity I, I I love that he found you, and you speak so eloquently. Oh, thank you. And you just deliver it, and I just love how you keep it real. And because of that, I can see why uh, Dr. Bill Cosby handpicked you for his uh, motivational speaker. Yes. And tell us about that, because I, I just know that you, I can just feel honored if, you know, <laughs> Bill Cosby came up to me and say, I have followed you. I see your spirit. You are amazing. I need you to be part of my team. It it was an incredible time. Yes. I, I was on Fox News advocating for victims of Hurricane Katrina, basically giving my take, talking, um, you know, about just the way in which the community will have to rally together, the support that is needed. And, you know, I got off the air. I was in Michigan at the time, actually, and I was going via satellite. I remember I was in my mother's house. I was sitting at her kitchen table and I get a call and I answer phones out. Hi, I am uh, Dr. Bill Cosby's representative. He just saw you on Fox News. He'd like to talk to you. What? <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> Are you saying is somebody like, am I getting punked or something? Right, what, what, right. What is going on? Okay. So they say, hang up, and then we're going to dial you back. Uh, okay. And sure enough, my phone rang directly after that, and it was the voice. And you don't mistake Bill, Bill Cosby's, Cosby's voice. voice. 
And he just said, Miss Lake, I saw you and I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed what you had to say, how much I feel like America needs to hear your take on life. And um, uh, at that time, talking about, you know, various aspects of racism and how it can be institutionalized and how we can overcome those things, how we can bridge the gap with um, responsibility for self and for our communities and strengthening our communities. And I'm still just in shock. You know, he's going on and on about things that I said. And he goes, you know, I'm going to be speaking at Xavier University uh, and I'm going to be speaking in D.C. And I would like you to join my call out to her because I believe you have a voice America needs to hear. Absolutely. Uh, they do. You know, and I mean, it just still was overwhelming. He goes, sure. And it's next week. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. And sure enough, that next week I met him and we flew to D.C. And uh, I began to talk about, uh, I gave my first speech, was called Power and Privilege, that I gave with him. And and, and uh, we went city to city and it was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to really, you know, being on television is one thing. And you do, of course, get to um, speak to people and, and, and relate to people. But you know, getting in the room and, and actually being able to feel the spirit of a community and mm -hmm. also understand their need, understand wh why they are in need and to connect them with agencies, people in their community um, that want to help, that can help, that maybe uh, people don't understand or even out there, don't even know that they're out there. And it's interesting because years later, I'm doing exactly the same, same thing, thing on paternity court, mm -hmm. meaning I'm get, getting to stand in, in, in the space, you know, with people who come into my courtroom and they're they're just done. You know, they're at that point where they just said, I, I've had it. Mm -hmm. I'm done with the dysfunction. I'm done with the denial. I'm done with the shame. I'm done with confusion. I am done with it. I want the answers. And to be able to talk to them, be able to figure out the why of, of it all, the how of it all, not just the what, and then to help usher them to this new space and time that's based and founded on the truth, but also connect them to resources in their home state that can continue to help them in this process. It's, it's really phenomenal. And, and that experience with Dr. Cosby is what truly yeah. um, prepared me in many ways for uh, paternity court and Dr. Cosby also is the person that encouraged me to write my book girl let me tell you I, mean, I was, was and I was getting ready to, that was gonna be my next topic because yeah. I want to talk about it no, <laughs> your you next book but I you know what's so amazing about you is the fact that we need your voice because what we see so much on TV is so negative that when you say okay this is how I can help you and this is how you can look at it in a positive way. This is how you can grow from it. I think that we need that voice more often. And I see exactly why Bill Cosby called you. Well, thank you. Yes, thank because you. we don't have that. You know, all we have is just what we see on TV and those are what people that we look up to because it's always either about the finances, about who's you you dating, the ballers and all that stuff. But it's like, no, we have other representation here that's more powerful, more encouraging and positive. Thank you. And I just think that you're amazing. Thank you. You're well, welcome. I'm doing my best. I'm doing so, my best. Thank you. <laughs> so let's go into your book. Sure. And I love the title because it's called Girl, Girl, Let Me Tell You. Let Me Tell You. <laughs> so tell us about the book. Well. And how you came up with the title, too. <laughs> funny enough. Funny enough. It was Dr. Cosby. I, we were coming home. I think. I don't know, I think we were in D.C. or we were taking the train and we had a little while, you know, a couple of hours. And, you know, as we traveled together, we would talk, you know, about relationships, dating. Yeah. You know, he would always ask me, well, who are you dating now? And I like, nobody, you know, <laughs> it's rough, Dr. C, you know, I would say. And and we would laugh and he'd say, you know, back in my day, a woman like you, you'd have like three suitors. You'd have three guys that wanted to marry. I was like, well, it ain't back then now. It's different. You know, now <laughs> men are used to having three women begging to marry them. And right. I'm like, and I'm not auditioning for anybody. You know, <laughs> I'm not auditioning. Uh, and, and I talked to him about how difficult it was to date and to meet people and funny stories about what happened to me. And he would laugh. And he said, you know, that's a book. He says, you need to write a book. He was saying, he, and he would always say to me, these experiences you're going through when people would you know, they'd see you on television or they'd see you being successful and, and, and in your career. They wouldn't think that you were having these problems on a personal right. level. And it's important for you to talk about it and share it because women are really hurting. And, and it's true. You know, there were so many women out at that time that just 
We couldn't figure out what in the world had happened on this personal level. Now, professionally, I pulled it together, but personally, this is harder than I thought. Yeah. And we were raised to believe, you know, if you, you, you show up and you do your best and you're an honorable person and you're a good person, everything was going to work out. Almost so this fairy tale dream that didn't happen that way. And he says, you need to write a book. And you need to include these stories of these things you tell me. This is because they're funny and and they make me laugh. It is hard to right. make me laugh. <laughs> and so I began to write the book. Look, I always tell people when Bill Cosby tells you to write a book, you just write a book. So I began writing it and telling my story and then answering questions that people had submitted to me over the years. People would send me, you know, emails. So I took the best of the questions and answered them, you know, put my mm -hmm. answers inside the book and called it Girl, Let Me Tell You. And he also laughed and, you know, at that name because I said, you know, I have to call your girlfriend. Sometimes things are so bad and you have to say, Girl, Let Me Tell You. Right. And he's like, that's the title. That's the title. And, and you know... It was well received and, and, and um, you know, people enjoyed reading it because it was just a lot of true stories. And it was my own life. And, yeah. you know, writing the book and taking my own advice that I would give other people, I ended up meeting my husband. And it was funny. I started writing the book and then I met my husband and then I married him right after the book was uh, published. So it was very <laughs> it was interesting. I followed my own advice. Right. And it worked. And it worked. Yeah. Well, there's a true testament right there. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So now in addition to. To writing your book, having the you know number one courtroom series, you also co-founded Women in Entertainment Empowerment Network. Yes, tell us about that. Well, the Women in Entertainment Empowerment Network, we call it WEEN, uh, is an organization of women um, that w was about gosh, how many years ago was that when the whole issue with Don Imus was with the women's basketball team at Rutgers University. Um, when he addressed those women in the way we said, you know, oh, uh, yes. there's got to be an organization that has something to say that addresses these negative portrayals of women mm -hmm. in media, in society that and, and, and more importantly, that talks to young women of color and just w young women, period, about their responsibility, their right, their, you know, their desires to live their dreams and pursue their passions and to make ourselves as professional women, especially professional women of color, more visible and mm -hmm. more accessible because, you know, it's easy to be on television. It's easy to do those things. And look, you hope that there are young women out there that are watching you, that uh, admire, that are inspired by your journey, but it's another thing to get in the room with those women right. and really talk and give your time and your and your energy to helping them build themselves and build the life they want for themselves. And so we started a tour called I Am Ween, and we would go city to city and basically have panel discussions, town hall meetings uh, on everything from, you know, financial uh, um, uh, and, and wealth building uh, to uh, financial literacy, health and wellness, uh, following your dreams, pursuing your passions, reality television, mm -hmm. everything that was affecting young women today and they were having trouble figuring out how do I overcome it? How do I deal with it? How do I process it? How do I figure out my point of view? Uh, we also do our six week uh, Ween Academy every summer which is an academy for young women and they have to audition and be um, picked and they get a six week crash course in the entertainment business because so many of our young people today look up to entertainers. Yeah. They want to be in entertainment but they only know about being in front of the camera and so so we give them a crash course on all the various types of careers that are in entertainment, from publicity and PR to doing being a camera operator yeah. to being a producer, a director, an entertainment lawyer, that there are so many jobs that help any entertainment show, entity, whatever that make that happen. There are so many pieces to that puzzle and you can be a part of that. Um, you know, so many people are just, oh, I want to be a host. I want to, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But there are other things and the most talented host, the, you know, the hosts with longevity are the hosts that also know how to produce, know how to produce yes. themselves, yes. know how to produce others, know how to write. You know, I think, you know, our younger generations, you know, they live in what I call the microwave, you know, society, microwave culture where you put everything in the microwave and you just push one minute and, you know, you don't even have to know how much a Big Mac costs because at McDonald's you just push Big Mac and then the number comes up. Mm -hmm. Everything just comes up and then they think life and career 
really like that. And yeah. that's not how it goes. And, you know, most of us that are in this business have produced. We we write. We don't just get in front of the camera and just go. Mm -hmm. And that's what they don't know. So we give them that course and we show them what what the behind the scenes uh, real really is life about. is. Yeah. yeah. And it's great. And then lastly, we have our Ween Awards every year where we uh, highlight, showcase and honor women that have dedicated a significant a part of their professional and personal lives to empowering women. So that's what uh, Ween does. And uh, we're, <laughs> we're ready to look. I'm all over the place, but I ultimately, love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's about, you know, I talk about this. It's just about living a life without limits and yes. helping people understand that the limits we place on ourselves, the limits others place on us, they're, 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 they're not real. Mm -hmm. And you can take those limits away and you can truly live the life you want. And that's what Oprah's going around the country now talking about. Absolutely. The life you want. The life you want. And speaking about that, what advice would you have to women such as, you know, such as yourself who is married? has a family and juggling career life because sometimes they battle between the two. What advice would you have for them to be able to have that balance? Well, girl, oh, let me tell let me you. Tell you. <laughs> That's one of those moments. <laughs> you know, it's, that it's just not easy. And it's, the scales are rarely even. You know, I think that's one of, you know, think about my mom and some of the best pieces of advice she's ever given me. Um, my late mother, she told me once, you know, Lauren, I, did, I didn't raise you to think life was a fairy tale. I don't want you to get that perspective because truly you write your own story yeah. and it you, you create your ending. You create that. And I think for people that are expecting the perfect balance in life or the woman that's expecting the Prince Charming to come and ring their doorbell the way they did for Cinderella or the person that's expecting that every day you come home and you feel like, oh my gosh, I have been the perfect blend of mother, wife, and professional woman today. I got it all right. None of us feel that. Right. You know, none of that. It's very rare. And as soon as you do start to feel a balance, usually something happens that tips one side of the scale another way. I mean, daily I say to myself, okay, now it's time for me to put the phone down, time for me to put the computer down. I need to look at my son. I need to pay <laughs> attention to what he's saying because, no, yeah. how often can we just be on the phone? Okay, let me just return this last text. Let me return this last email. And we live in a society and yes. a culture now where everyone needs instant gratification. If you don't answer somebody back, they're like, what's wrong with you? Right. You, know, you didn't answer me right back. And you have to put, you have to set boundaries that work for you. And it's okay if you're unavailable sometimes. And it's okay if you put everything aside to just be with your children. And it's also okay if some days when you really need to work, you pull that video out and say, baby, I need you to go on here and watch this uh, Sesame Street for mm -hmm. a second. Right, right. Because mommy has got to get a couple things done. It's all okay. You have to learn how to mm. forgive yourself in, 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 in situations where things just don't balance out ex exactly. But I think striving for the val balance and having the intention to be as good as you possibly can to everyone in every situation, that is really the balance. Understanding that you will move constantly from one area to the next and just being able to say to yourself, I've given it the best I can yeah. for today. Yeah. And look, going to bed at night and saying, tomorrow's another day. If I'm blessed to have it, I'm going to try to do better. And I love that answer because you just kept it real that you are going to be moving from, okay, I got to take care of my husband. I got to take care of my son. Yes. My children. I have to go to the grocery store. I need to go to the cleaners. I yep. need to do parent teacher conference. And you just have to just maneuver and just roll with it as they come. And be okay. And be you okay know, be with okay. that. You know, I get my son these, I love to get him the organic soy yogurts from Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. Today, child, he just had yo play. You know what I mean? It just, it, <laughs> and the star was right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I had every intention. That's what I like to feed him. That's what I like him to have. But you know what? This morning, mommy had a 12 hour day. And down the street, the store down the street has yo play. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to have today. Right. And it's going to be okay. okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. And, you know, because there's a part, you know, you want to be, oh, can I make, okay, I've got a 10 o'clock, but can I make it to Trader Joe's and get back? And, no, that's what's going to make you late. Now you're messing up the rest of your day. Right, right. Make the adjustments. You know, as my husband, my husband coaches football, he talks about game time adjustments. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to make a game time adjustment. <laughs> and that means it's game time. The day has started. Today we're doing yo play. Right. <laughs>
And it's okay. And it's okay. It's going to be all right. <laughs> so I have a couple of hot topics for you sure. um, when you talk about, you know, the world that we live in with instant gratification. And so now we have that in our social experiment with reality TV. Yeah. And so I'm not sure if you heard of um, Married at First Sight. Have you heard of that show? Mm, why does it, it it's, rings a bell, but I have not seen it. Has it has it aired yet? It has aired, and it you know caused a media storm because it's so different. And I understood it from one aspect, and then understood it in two different ways. So basically, everyone's looking for love, and they can't find it regularly in the way of just you know just meeting somebody organically. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they put all these experts together, which is a psychologist, a sexologist. Um, and uh, two other kinds of experts. And pretty much they match you with your perfect person that says scientifically is your mate. And that's never going to work. And that's really, you don't think that's it? Well, no. So they had three couples. And two of them just basically, oh, let me re go back a little bit. I'm jumping to the gun. But they stay together for 30 days after mm -hmm. they say I do. The first time they meet, they get married. They stay together for 30 days, and after the 30 days, they talk with all the specialists to see if they're going to decide to stay, stay married, married or get divorced. Two couples stayed wow. married, one couple got divorced. I, I just don't believe, I, look, if it works for people, yeah. great. <laughs> That's not how it would work for me. And I, look, I talk about this in the book, too, because it, it's akin to what I talk about in my book called a resume relationship. Mm -hmm. And we put ourselves sometime in boxes and I know I've done it before. I've dated a guy for way too long as way before I met my husband, but mm -hmm. a guy that look on paper, this goes with this, this, okay. He likes to do this. You like to do this. Was okay. It should work. It's a great, I call it a resume relationship, but that does not mean in practice. Yes. It will actually work yes. because there's so much more to life and to who you are than what you put on a resume. And so I say these matchups are based upon what one person has told the experts or this scientific yes. experiment about who they are. But or new, who they think they are. Our, that <laughs> was my next point. <laughs> But the truth is, do they really know who they are? And is the information they're giving either the best guess about who they think they are? Or is it who they want to be, but they're not that person yet? Or is it who they were and they're trying to get back yes. to? You know, as people, yes. we are constantly moving. Yeah. And so much of it is about timing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say, and look, if two have stayed married, more power. Hopefully they'll last. Yeah. But... I just don't believe that experiment is how you can deal with marriage because, look, ultimately marriage, and I tell people this all the time as I talk about relationships, marriage and love, and it's it's a decision. Yeah. It's a daily. decision. Yeah, it's a daily, daily decision. decision. And you can make it out to be whatever. Whatever it is you think you need it to be so it'll work for you. Some people need the love, you know, fairy tale, love at first sight. Some people need love based upon, you know, certain parameters. Some people got a list, you know, that, that doesn't work either. When you make a list of this is what I want, ultimately it's a decision mm -hmm. every single day. And if you don't make the decision to work through it and work on it, it will not work. Absolutely. And I think that. What we're, we're trying everything, you know, yeah. okay, I, I want to try this, I want to try that, I want to go here, I want to go there, instead of just actually working on yourself, because what I discovered watching it, and I followed it weekly, every single week, mm -hmm. I followed it, and they wanted the relationship, but they couldn't open up themselves to the person that they married. Right. So, you know what I mean? So they say, oh, yes, I want to be in a wonderful, loving relationship, but yet you couldn't communicate and you keep everything hidden because, well, I have trust issues. Well, first of all, I don't know you. Right. <laughs> okay, right. so let's just cut to the chase. I can't communicate and tell you I married you, but I don't know you. Exactly. And so we're pretty much now in an arranged marriage. Yeah. So that's the, see, and that's what I think people miss when they are looking for a relationship and mm -hmm. I always say this don't look because a watched pot never boils mm. every time you know and when you're in the cook in the kitchen you're trying to get something done you just need this water to boil because you got to get this done because you got to move on to your next task 
If you stand over that stove, how long does it take this water to boil? I say, I mean, how long? And I'm laughing because it's so true. It is. It just won't go to a boil. Yes. And yet, when you get busy doing something else in the kitchen, somewhere else in the house, well, let me vacuum this right quick while this water is wet. Instant. Next thing you know, it's bo- you're like, oh, it boiled water. down at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now your pot is burned. But um, that. For me, that is such a it's it's a metaphor for life. It's it, it, it's representative of how life is. Yeah. If you just just work on just letting your light shine because people are drawn to the light mm-hmm. and you will attract hopefully the kind of people when you are letting your light shine. Yes. That means being the best of who you are, because if you think about looking it, it never it never works. You it know, doesn't. you either get yourself into a situation where you're accepting less than what you deserve or you get yourself in a situation where you in a full audition process for somebody waiting for somebody to pick you like you, you know, on American Idol of dating life or of marriage or something. And that's no fun either. Mm-hmm. But when the timing is right and you are looking, you know, two spirits connect. And look, that means it's not going to be about what he looks like, what he got on. And those are all things. You know, I tell people all the time, they love my husband. Oh, your husband this. Oh, he dresses so nice. Oh, honey. Well, just let me tell you. When I met him, he didn't. He's like six foot three with a cuff in his jeans. <laughs> what, 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 what pant leg is going to be too long for you? What, what would you have a cuff in it? A little cuff, you know? Bless him. And didn't know what he was doing. But, you know, look, in your 20s, that's the thing where it's like, mm-mm, girl, he's a mess. I don't like what he had on. And you would write somebody off. Right. But you get smarter in your 30s. Right. Okay, after a little life. And be and brilliant you, in your 40s. Right? You, right, right, right. Look, baby, <laughs> let me go with you. Exactly. Let me go on with you and show you what to do um, for this. And don't don't cuss for your pants. And yes. And let me show you how to wear this. And this is cute. You know, it, it the clothes, that doesn't make a man. You right. know, the things we think about or what, it's not that. It's about the spirit. And it's about does that person what want what you want at the same time you want it Mm -hmm. and building the confidence building the trust communicating on a on a level where you feel like you can give of yourself to that person in that show you're talking about in 30 days that may not happen right right and what was so sad about it and I took it a little personally what was so sad about it was that they had two Caucasian couples and one black couple and guess which couple didn't make it? The black couple. Right. <laughs> they had yeah. communication problems since day one. Yeah. Because they didn't open themselves. I mean, even though, you know, the, the other couples, they had issues, but they allowed themselves to open up. Right. And the, you know, the black couple didn't. And I mean, you know, it's a shame that, of course, it was yes. the black couple because, of course, I even like, in my, oh. I, I like to see positive images yes. of of families of color because I think it's important for all of us, mm-hmm. not just people of color, but also all races to see families, relationships of color yeah. growing. And, and and so that's unfortunate. But I will say this, it could happen to any of them. It could, yeah. it could happen to any of them because it all depends. People truly are people and mm-hmm. what they bring to the table their own baggage yeah you know so i it would be it were there in were there issues were they cultural in a sense where you felt like or was it just in, they could not open up to one another because they couldn't communicate they couldn't communicate no, it was just a communication that's problem an issue from that day can one. happen to anybody anybody anybody, yeah. anybody. but i what i discovered was and It's interesting because the other couples had their own separate places, but decide to get a new place together Mm -hmm. just to start off. So, you know what? You have your apartment. I have mine because it was based in New York. The other two um, Caucasian couples said, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and get a brand new place and start from scratch. Black couple couldn't agree. I have my place, but I have my place. Mm -hmm. So then they had to say, okay, we have to have a compromise. And he goes, all right, fine. I'll move into your place. So the husband moved into the wife's place and they and the expert asked do you think there was an issue because you guys you already felt a certain kind of way being that you had to just go ahead and move in her apartment he was like yeah it just felt very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. whereas the other couple said you know what let's just really we got 30 days yes let's just really do this and start new start new for both of us yeah and so yeah it just kind of was like "Ah, i really was rooting for them yeah but i understood why yeah. The dynamic didn't work. And then, you, you know, I don't know if the show does that, but it would be interesting to me to find out what is it about your place? Yeah. What is it about your house? 
Why did you need to hold it on to it? It goes deeper than that. It, yeah. It, yeah, it's not about the house. And speaking of deeper, I have one more hot topic for you before we wrap up the show. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you, get your thoughts on the Ray Rice NFL situation, mm -hmm. because what they're doing now is they're collaborating, partnering up with other women on how to fix the problem of abuse in the NFL. And what they're doing is they're saying that it's a deeper issue than just hitting. And how do we work through that to where women can communicate better with the players and the players can communicate better with the women because of the Ray Rice situation? Because they're already combative on the field and they don't know how to turn that off when they sure. get home. Uh, look, you know, um, this situation, of course, was I mean, it was terrible. It was tragic. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it was, you literally watched a crime be committed, abuse, and it, it was what it was. We saw it. But I have been um, saying for, since the beginning that if they do not create some culture of healing, uh, you know, communication instead of condemnation, this is going to continue to happen. We need to have this conversation and with the women and the men. So you think and, it was good that they partnered up with women programs to... Well, they're going to have to. Yeah. But you know what else they're going to really have to do? Mm -hmm. They're going to have to create a safe place for men to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And because we can stand on the outside of everything they're experiencing and tell them why they feel something or what they should feel mm -hmm. or what the right things to do is to do and what the right thing isn't to do. But when you see men in a certain professional capacity as we've seen in the NFL lately a continually struggle and have issues and cases popping up where, where violence is the underlying then we need to talk about this yeah. just how when they're rookies they have you know police officers come in and talk to them about not drinking and driving they've got people come in and talk to them about things to be aware of with women and, and getting yourself caught up in situations they got people that come in and talk to them about how to do your finances they got people that they have all now we have to talk about about and earnestly about relationships and the level of aggression and that you have to put out on your job then you have to learn how to turn off instead of using your body and in in it to communicate your point on the field yeah. now you have to be able to use the words and you have to be able to talk about when the words are are difficult to find mm -hmm. and when you're in a place where you're feeling angry or you're feeling aggressive or you're feeling overwhelmed and these players are going to have to feel like their jobs are not in jeopardy if they talk about it that's a good point and or no one's gonna talk about it right and the women are gonna pay but let's also be fair there are situations where women commit domestic abuse as against well men yes so and there are relationships that are volatile where men are hitting women and women are hitting men and but for us seeing this on mm -hmm. the elevator this probably we would not be talking about this because she probably would not have been talking yeah, right, about it right and that's what we have to address with women and and i think we have to get to a place where instead of girl you better leave him let's bring this couple in mm -hmm. let's talk about this with them together and because in this situation they're still married i think they have at least they have a child i think well, or not what, one. what they did was instead of him instead of the wife at the time it was her fiance testifying against him they went ahead and got married well sure I you mean, know and i get that but i think that what the nfl is trying to do is they're trying to employ women instead of having the men but speak let's about be clear, it clear with that tape mm -hmm. they don't need her testimony right <laughs> so 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 let's just get that straight but at the and, time and yeah what, it didn't know, come out they yet don't, they don't need that and yeah. anybody knows they're on an elevator hitting folks is on tape yeah so and shortly thereafter the story broke anyway mm -hmm. so they knew that there was some level of a tape and so they knew the just because they weren't showing the whole tape they knew what happened in the room right so and, and the prosecution doesn't need that to prosecute they've got the tape so you know going forward i don't know i i think this is just such a sad situation and yet we have got to figure out how to make this a, a, a situation where men and women learn not just the nfl and that's another thing it's kind of you know we're talking about it because 
it happen to a player in the mm-hmm. NFL. But if we're being very honest, it's happening to the lady and the man down the street, around the corner, yeah, up the road, in the next state, in the world. Absolutely. Violence against women, domestic abuse. It, it, it is prevalent. And it's easy for us to sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But now the NFL, is sh- the spotlight is on it. Well, let's do something about it in the NFL and in, 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 in our families board, and across as, the board. We as, got yes, to. Absolutely. And we'll see because now they're taking a different spin on hiring women to handle this situation. So we'll see how this pans out and how this plays out. And so they're talking about implementing a new um was this the new task force that they were well, yeah they were yeah and they're trying to implement it within 30 days since the time that he had the press conference but now they're employing women to talk about it to deal with the situation being that maybe they're be able to help a little bit more because they're more privy to what the mind of a woman will think as opposed to hiring men so we'll see how that whatever it takes yes start the dialogue start the healing absolutely Thank you so much for being. I just love talking to you. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much for too. being on our show. Tell us where we can find you on social media. I know we have Twitter, yeah. but I know you got Facebook and on Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter and Facebook at Lauren Lake E N T, short for Lauren Lake Enterprises, and of course at Paternity Court on Facebook, Twitter, and at Paternity Court TV on Instagram. Thank Keep you. up with us. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for being with thank me this you. evening, and thank you so much for joining with me again this evening for Phenomenal women i'm your host ashita Andre, and i look forward to inspiring you next week from producers maria menounos dario Kristen, tiana hobson kevin undergaro and the entire bhl crew we would like to thank you for supporting black hollywood live the first online broadcast network dedicated to african-american entertainment for questions and comments contact us at info at black like us on facebook tweet us or instagram us at bhl online and i'm your bhl announcer scipio instagram me at planet scipio thank you for tuning in Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.